generating random values in C-sharp is really easy. But do you know why there are different ways of doing things and how to choose the right method? Let me show you in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you need a quick answer to the question, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So here I have a, a console application. It's actually in Visual Studio 2026, which is in preview right now. It should be out in the next few weeks. Um, also using .NET 10, the preview version. Don't worry, this will work in .NET 9 as well. Um, so you can follow along in Visual Studio 2022 in .NET 9, not a problem. But I wanted to use you know, what I'm using every day right now. Um, so .NET 10 VS 2026. So also note, if you want this source code, it's there's a link in the description that you can um, get that emailed to you. Okay, so we're talking about random values. And I have this for loop with two outputs that we're going to we're gonna fill. Right now, they're going to say zero. And we're saying random one and random two. I want two different random numbers printed in each line. Now, we can kind of track, are these two random numbers the same or different? So let's start with the way we used to do random numbers in C Sharp. This is not the primary way we do random numbers anymore, but I want to show you why it still exists. So random uh, RNG for random number generator one equals new. And then we will duplicate that line, a control D if you're on Windows to duplicate that line. Um, I guess you have to have Windows in order to use Visual Studio 2026. So um, here are two different instances of the random class. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to say down here under output one, we're gonna say rng one dot next, which is gonna give us an integer. And we're gonna say, I want from one to 101. And that's gonna give a min value and a max value. So from one to 100, not 101, you know, it says 101 because this top value is exclusive, the bottom value is inclusive, meaning, it could include a one when it outputs. So it might output a one, but it will never output 101, which means if we want one to 100 as options, then we want one to 101 in this, um, in this creation. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna copy it and paste it down here, but say RNG2. And we're gonna save this, we're going to build the solution then I'm going to open up PowerShell. Let's actually pin it open and say uh, .NET run and run our project. And it's going to give me those random values. So for random number one, so RNG one, we get 65, 21, 99, 73, et cetera. For random number two, we get 58, 18, 67, 58, et cetera. Um, so each of those is generating different random numbers. That probably seems obvious, but I'm going to show you why it's not obvious or not, it should not be expected. Okay. So these are random numbers. Now, just to be clear here, if you get two numbers that are duplicated, that does not mean something went wrong. It could mean that if you have something weird going on, but most likely what it means is two numbers were just randomly selected. In this case, we have a one in 100 chance or 1% chance. So therefore, twice in a row is possible. Um, it's even easier if you put it down to 11. So it's one to 10, you're gonna get duplicates all the time. So that's what a random number, a generation of a random number is in C sharp up until more recently. Now it still works and you can still do it this way, but I do wanna point out that this instance, RNG2, or this instance, RNG1, these are not thread safe instances, which means if you are working in parallel, if you're doing multiple threads, you should not pass an instance around or access the same instance. Instead, you should have one instance per thread. That's something to be careful of, otherwise you might have issues with your random number generation. So that's one of the reasons why there's a newer way of doing things that's actually thread safe. But also I do want to point out one feature, not a bug, a feature of this way of instantiating. You can pass in a seed. 
A seed value is a starting value, not meaning to start from that number, but it means that it uses that to create the first generated random value. So for example, if I pass in 25 here and do the same exact thing for RNG2, what do you think is going to happen when I run this? Let's find out. So I'm going to clear the screen and we're going to say .NET run again. And notice we have 79 for the first value and for RAM2, 79. Then 16 and 16, 25 and 25. You might say, wait, that's not random. Yes, it is. It's just that it's random in that particular random thread, meaning for this instance, it's going to give us random numbers based upon the 25 seed. So 79, 16, 25, 90, 50, 41, et cetera, are all based upon starting from that seed and going next, 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 next down the row. Okay. But why is it generating the same random numbers every time? Well, that's because there are times when you might want to reproduce a random series of numbers. So for example, maybe you have some type of, uh, of game where you are generating random values for things and someone reports a bug. And they say, I had this bug. And you say, I don't know how to reproduce that because it's random. So how do I reproduce a random thing, especially if it's not one to 100, but one to 10,000, okay? So how do you reproduce that? Well, if you know the starting seed, for that particular user's experience, then you can find out, okay, this is what that looks like, okay? So you can reproduce that user's game with all the random numbers. They're still random, but they're all based upon that starting value, okay? So there's a reason for that. We can unit test it. We can do other things to kind of understand how this works, make it predictable, even though it's a series of random numbers, okay? That's how to do random up until more recent versions of C Sharp. Let's copy our for loop. Let's unpin this temporarily. And I'm going to paste it down below. I'm going to comment out all of this, including the instances of the random number generators. I want to do this again, but using a new way of doing things, random.shared. Okay, this is not an instance. This, well, technically behind the scenes, it kind of is, but this is a shared instance. So random.shared.next. Notice I'm not instantiating anything. I'm just saying, give me the next thing. That's all I'm gonna do. So let's build this and let's run this. So we're gonna clear the screen and we're gonna do a .NET run again. And we get 4426. Actually, we started from 94. 94, 91, let's pin this again. Okay, so let's do this again. Remember, remember 94 and 91, those are the starting values. So let's clear the screen and run it again. 42 and 70, not the same starting values for either of them. So this is a way to just say, give me a random value. That's all I care about. I don't care about creating an instance and making sure I know a seed value, et cetera. Notice you cannot set a seed value here, which means you cannot have predictable random sequences. So that's that's one drawback. And if you need predictable, well, you have to create an instance still. That's why it still exists. But if you just need a random value, random.share.next will give you that. And there's different options there for um, integers and decimals. And you can even do like things like shuffle now, where you can shuffle an array and grab certain number of values. Um, so there's lots of stuff under shared that you can just use without instantiating something. But also note that this right here is thread safe. You can use random.shared on with multiple threads. You will not have a problem in almost any instance, unless you're doing like parallel uh, processing with millions of calls per millisecond kind of thing. Unless you have that kind of thing going on, you're not gonna have a problem with random.shared um, you're going to have no problems. It will just work. Um, and even those cases going to slow things down a little bit. It's not going to cause a problem. All right. So that's random and how you use it in .NET. For most cases, random.shared is all you need. If you need to have a particular trackable uh, numeric sequence, 
create a new instance. And if you're doing cryptography, don't do either of these things. Use the cryptographic library. All right. Again, the source code's down in the, uh, the description. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.